one thing I learned from Disney princess stories, that is to become a damsel in distress. What goes through your mind when we think of a Disney princess? I used to think princesses living magical moments and in the end, being saved by a handsome prince. But what do we notice when we look at each story? They actually spend their time cleaning, cooking, singing and dancing. <laughs> Each story has wonderful and magical moments, but what about domestication, objectification and abuse? Snow White lives with the seven dwarves, where she had to clean their house, cook their meals and do all the household chores. She was domesticated before being saved by her prince. Or what about little mermaid Ariel? She fell in love with a young man, sold her soul to a witch in exchange for a pair of legs. She's willing to do anything just to get what she wanted, and that is to be the object of his desire. I grew up in the Philippines as a child. Both of my parents were busy traveling for work. Oftentimes, we're left with nannies or other family members. Not having my parents around me made me feel alone and empty. Reading books and watching princess movies was my way to cope with sadness. I dreamed I would meet a Prince Charming, get married, and live happily ever after. In 2000, I came to Canada as an international student. It was very scary, but exciting at the same time. Everything was new. New place, new culture, new adventure. It wasn't easy living by myself, and even though my stepfather's family lived close by, I still felt lonely. So I made friends with different people and joined a Filipino university group. I got involved in the community, and it felt like home again. Through a youth group in the community, I met a young man. We started as friends and then progressed into a relationship. It was great. I met his family. I thought I had met my Prince Charming, and marrying him seems to be the right thing to do, because that's how every prince's story goes. Every princess would meet a young prince, get married, and live happily ever after, right? So at the age of 23, my dream partly came true. I was in love, and I got married. It was great at the beginning. We were both young, full of hopes and dreams. My husband was working, we had our own place. Life looked promising. I was living my own princess story, or so I thought. When I was six months pregnant with our daughter, my husband started taking drugs. He started with recreational drugs and turned into hard drugs after. I became worried, but hoped that once our daughter was born, he would sober up and would take care of us. Not at all. He continued his drug use. His moods became unpredictable, and he wasn't able to hold down jobs. I had to take two jobs just to make ends meet, take care of our daughter as well as the household chores. He sustained his addiction by stealing, selling some of his belongings and stealing money from me. He became emotionally and physically abusive. He would force me to have sex with him. I was terrified, and I cried each time it happened. I felt powerless and hopeless, and I was so afraid to express how I felt. But in spite of it all, I would put on a happy face and pretend things were okay. But deep down inside, I wept. I subconsciously held on to the idea that I would have a happily ever after. Because in Beauty and the Beast, Bella was terrified of the beast but she chose to live with him in hopes for a better life. She helped him change his character, and in the end, they live happily ever after. Not in my story. I felt mine was a hopeless case. Until one day, my mother-in-law had asked him to go to Calgary for a fresh start. Maybe being away from his family would give him a better perspective in life. I hope so, too. The proposed plan is that once he's fully settled, my daughter and I would follow. But is that what I wanted? 
Not at all. But I wouldn't want to be considered a failure and fear that I would not be a good wife. Because in my culture, wives are supposed to submit to their husband, love them no matter what, and take care of the family. And unfortunately, often to a point where women are subjected to domestication, objectification, and abuse. So the turning point for me was when my husband left for Calgary. This moment has given me a sense of relief for the first time in four years. I no longer had to worry about him getting high, or what mood he'll be in when I come home. And most importantly, I didn't have to worry about my daughter's safety under his care. He didn't live with us anymore. He couldn't touch me. He's far away. So as days went by, I started to reconnect with myself again. I could now focus on my daughter and myself. I even managed to do the things that I used to love, like reading. And then my fantasy about living a fairy tale story began to fade. I thought to myself, if my story is not going to have a happily ever after, I needed to rewrite it. So I started to look for answers elsewhere other than fairy tales. I came across books that had collections of inspirational stories about women. And one story that spoke to me the most was by a woman named Sue. Sue fell in love at a young age and was blessed with two beautiful daughters, but somehow found herself trapped in an abusive relationship. In her darkest moment, Sue awakened and realized that she deserved better. She took charge of her own life and began taking steps to improve her situation. She moved to a new place with her children, worked hard at her job. She got promoted and even started her own company. Sue became successful, happy, and free. From experience, I can say that the word success doesn't mean a thing while we are living in an abusive relationship. But with my newfound peace of mind, the hope for success said a lot. And then I thought to myself, if Sue can do it, I can do it too. My consciousness was awakened by my desire to live the life I deserve. And I was motivated to start making changes because what matters to me more than anything was the well-being of my daughter. I wanted to be a role model for my daughter, and I don't want her to grow up following in my footsteps of abuse and misery. So the first thing I did was end the relationship and file for divorce. I was judged by people around me. I was criticized and called names, but somehow I didn't care as much anymore. I needed to go forward and not look back, even if it meant burning bridges. So I only maintained relationship with friends and families who supported me the most. Went back to school, changed jobs, and moved to a new place. It wasn't easy being a single parent, but it's all worth it. I am now happy and fulfilled. I have a great job. My daughter is all grown up and happy. I've also attracted the right man in my life, someone who loves and respects me, and most importantly, supports my dream about helping others. My newfound energy has allowed me to attract supportive people in my life, and things became better. I didn't let my past ruin me, but instead, I've used my strength and courage to define my future. I am not a Disney princess, I am not a damsel in distress. I don't need a prince to save me, because I can save myself. My journey has strengthened my purpose in life about helping others. I now help women in my community who are going through the same struggles. If I can rewrite my story, they can too. Embracing my self-worth has given me the power to choose and decide for my own happiness the strength and courage to set boundaries, and most importantly, the lesson of learning how to be a role model for my daughter by creating my own happily ever after. Thank you.